Hi, my name's Laura and I'm going to be running the session today. So hello again to everyone who participated in our previous sessions and welcome to those of you who are watching for the first time. It's good to have you with us. Now today's session is aimed at people who are living with mild to moderate stage dementia. The session is designed to help with focus and thought processes surrounding language and numbers, as well as some reminiscence comparing the present to the past. The session is designed to be used with family members, friends or caregivers if that's possible, so please do ask them to join us if you would like. Now today's session will be broken down into three parts. We'll be doing some cryptic language puzzles to begin with, then some price comparison challenges, and then reminiscence about a famous historical event to finish with. If you have any questions or would like any further information, then please do type into the comments box below and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. So if you've just joined us, today's session is aimed at people who are living with mild to moderate stage dementia. And it's also designed for caregivers, family members or friends to participate in. But if that's not possible just now because of the current circumstances, then perhaps you can watch it separately and then discuss it later. So again, today's session is going to be broken down into three parts. We'll have a cryptic language puzzle to begin with, then some price comparison challenges, then we'll be doing some reminiscence and general knowledge at the end. You might like to have a notepad beside you to jot down the answers as we go. And remember, you can stop the video at any time and rewatch it as many times as you need to as we go along. So let's get started. Now let's try some puzzles with cryptic clues. And these will really help to stimulate our thought processes surrounding using language. Now, the one thing that all the answers have in common is that they are famous stops on the London Underground. So, for example, if the first clue was bad news for Napoleon and we got another clue that was a song by ABBA, the answer would be Waterloo. So let's give it a go. Remember that all the answers are also famous stops on the London Underground and you can stop the video at any time if you'd like a bit longer for each question or want to discuss the questions with anyone. So the first clue is that it's falling down. It's falling down. Another clue would be that it's also part of a well-known song. Let's have a listen. What do you think? Well, the answer is London Bridge. It's London Bridge that's falling down. Okay, clue number two. Where weapons are kept. Where weapons are kept. Now, it's also the name of a famous London football club, as well as being a stop in the underground. What do you think? Well, the answer is Arsenal, and Arsenal is where weapons are kept. Clue number three, where you go for men and women's singles and doubles. Where you go for men and women's singles and doubles. Another clue is that it's a famous tennis tournament. Did you get it? That's it, it's Wimbledon. Wimbledon is where you would go for men and women's singles and doubles. So clue number four, she had a long reign. She had a long reign rain. Now it's also the name of a type of sponge cake. What do you think? A long rain and a type of sponge cake. It's Victoria, which is also a really busy bus and rail as well as underground station. So clue number five, he's a famous bear. He's a famous bear. There's also a statue of him there. Did you get it? It's Paddington. Now, I really loved the films of Paddington that were out recently, and it was also a great TV series in the 1970s. Okay, so the last one, clue number six. Elementary, dear Watson. Elementary, dear Watson. Now, another clue might be that it's where Sherlock Holmes lived. What do you think? Elementary, dear Watson, where Sherlock Holmes lived. 
it's Baker Street. So we had London Bridge that was falling down, we had Arsenal where weapons are kept, Wimbledon where you go for men and women singles and doubles, Victoria who had the longest reign, Paddington the famous bear with his own statue and Baker Street where Sherlock Holmes lived. So I hope you enjoyed thinking about these cryptic puzzles with me. So the answer to the first question was London Bridge. It was London Bridge that was falling down in the song. Now London Bridge is the oldest existing station in London. It was built in 1836 as part of the London and Greenwich Railway. Now Arsenal was the answer to the second clue and that's where weapons are kept. So Arsenal Station took its name from the football club in 1932 and it's the only tube station to be directly named after a club in the UK. And clue number three, Wimbledon is where you go for men and women singles and doubles and it also used to be where you could see a dog called Laddie. Now he was an Airedale Terrier and he worked as a railway collection dog. He collected donations for the Southern Railwaymen's Home for retired railway workers. He had a box strapped to his back and he worked in the station from 1949 to 1956, collecting over £5,000 and he spent his own retirement in the home that he raised the money for. Now it was Victoria who had the longest reign before the current Queen and Victoria Underground Station is the second busiest on the London Underground. Over 84 million people used the station in 2018 and it's recently undergone some expansion to help cope with all these crowds. Now Paddington Bear was named after Paddington Station and the station was also the first destination of Queen Victoria who in turn was the first reigning monarch to travel by train. She travelled from Slough to Paddington after being at Windsor Castle because the road was too dusty apparently so she had to take the train instead. And finally 221B Baker Street was where Sherlock Holmes lived and the tile work of Baker Street Station features a silhouette of this fictional detective. At one stage there was even a pub named after his arch rival Moriarty on platform 2. I hope you enjoyed doing these cryptic puzzles with me. So money has changed a lot in value over the years. Let's have a think about how much things cost today compared to years ago and how much the value of things has changed over time. So this is a really good exercise for using memories from the past to think about how things currently are in the present. So let's start with a pint of milk. How much do you think that a pint of milk roughly costs today? Now it can vary a little bit between shops, but it's around about 55 pence for a pint of milk just now. So how much do you think that a pint of milk was back in 1980? That's 40 years ago now, when the Rubik's Cube first became a popular toy. Do you think that it was either A, 17 pence, B, 27 pence, or C, 37 pence? What do you think? Well, the answer was A. It was 17 pence for a pint of milk in 1980. Was that more or less than you thought it would be? The equivalent of 17 pence in today's money is 73 pence, so milk is relatively a little bit cheaper today for us than it was back in 1980. Now what about a loaf of bread? How much do you think a loaf of bread costs today in 2020? Well again it can vary quite a lot between shops, but you can still get a loaf of bread for roughly one pound. How much do you think that a loaf of bread was back in 1975? That's 45 years ago now when the Watergate scandal with President Nixon first broke in America. Do you think that it was either A 49 pence, B 69 pence or C 19 pence? How much do you think a loaf of bread was in Britain in 1975? Well it was roughly 19 pence. What did you think? Now 19 pence then is the equivalent of about two pounds today, so bread has remained a little bit cheaper today, comparatively speaking. Now number three, the first class stamp. So stamps have gone up in price quite a lot over the last few years, perhaps because fewer people are using traditional mail just now. But at the moment, a first class stamp is 76 pence. 
How much do you think a first class stamp was in 1985? Now 1985 is the year that EastEnders was on the BBC for the first time. Do you think that it was A, 47 pence, B, 17 pence, or C, 7 pence? How much do you think that a first class stamp was in 1985? Well the answer is B, it was 17 pence. That's the equivalent of 55 pence today. So stamps have become relatively more expensive over the years. How much did you think that they were? Now, let's think about the price of a litre of petrol. So just now, in 2020, a litre of petrol is roughly £1.16, although it is falling a bit at the moment. How much do you think it was 40 years ago in 1980? How much was a litre of petrol in 1980? Do you think that it was A, 48 pence? B, 28 pence, or C, 78 pence. What do you think? Well, it was B, 28 pence, which is the equivalent of 90 pence today. So actually, there's not too much difference in the relative cost of petrol just now when you take inflation into account. Did you think it would be more or less than this? Now, what about a pint of beer? I wonder if there's been much difference in the cost of a pint of beer over the years. Now today, in 2020, the price of an average pint is roughly £4, although it does vary a little bit around the country. So back in 1970, 50 years ago, when Edward Heath had just won the general election, how much do you think that a pint of beer cost then? How much was a pint of beer in 1970? Do you think that it was A, 20 pence, B, 60 pence, or C, one pound? Well, all the possible answers are a lot cheaper than beer is today. What do you think? Well, the answer is A, a pint of beer was 20 pence in 1970, and the equivalent cost today is three pounds and 32 pence. So beer is relatively more expensive today than it was 50 years ago by about a pound. Right, cinema tickets. So today, in 2020, the average cost of a cinema ticket is £10. How much do you think people in Britain were paying for cinema tickets 30 years ago in 1990? That was the year of the poll tax demonstration in London and also the year when Margaret Thatcher resigned. In 1990, do you think that cinema tickets were A, £6.31, B, £4.50 or C, £2.81? What do you think? Well, the price of a cinema ticket in 1990 was C, £2.81. That's the equivalent today of £7.05. So cinema tickets are also slightly more expensive today when you take inflation into account. Let's look at some more expensive items now. What about the cost of a car, say a Mini today? Well, in 2020, the average price of a brand new Mini is £20,000. How much do you think one would have set you back in 1965? Now this was the year of the state funeral for Winston Churchill. So in 1965, do you think that a mini would have cost you A, £5,000, B, £450, or C, £7,000? What do you think? Well, the answer is B, £450. So a brand new Mini would have cost you £450 in 1965. Was that less than you thought it would be? That's the equivalent today of £9,205.97. So even taking inflation into account, Minis are almost double the relative value today. What do you think about that? Do you think they're worth it? And finally, the value of houses. So in 2020, in the UK, the current average house price is about £230,000. What do you think the price of an average house was 50 years ago, back in 1970? Now this was the year that Paul McCartney announced that he was leaving the Beatles. Do you think that it was A, £4,975, B, £40,975, or C, £10,000? Well, the answer is A, £4,975. Is that what you thought? 
That's the equivalent today of £82,634.67. So again, houses are relatively much more expensive today than they were then. It seems that there isn't so much difference in the relative cost of smaller, more everyday items between now and years ago, with much larger differences in the values of the bigger items such as cars and houses. What do you think about that? I hope you enjoyed thinking about the changing prices and values of things over the years with me today. So let's do some reminiscence, stimulate some memories and think about some general knowledge. Remember you can stop the video at any time if you'd like to think about the points that come up or discuss them with somebody. So in this week in history, at the end of May in 1844, there was a revolution in communication. What do you think that might have been? What revolution in communication happened in May 1844? Well, it involved something that looked a bit like this. What do you think? Well, the first message in Morse code was transmitted on the 24th of May, 1844. That's 176 years ago. Samuel Morse developed one of the first almost instantaneous communication systems. Before Morse code, messages were still handwritten and often delivered on horseback. So messages were sent and received by sending pulses down electrified wires using an international code. The first message went from Washington to Baltimore and it read, What hath God wrought? Which is a line from Numbers in the Bible. Do you know what Morse code is made up of? Well, it's a system of dots and dashes which are tapped out on a telegraph key. They can also be flashed by lights or represented by sound. The most used letters in the alphabet only use a few symbols to represent them and the least used letters have longer combinations of dots and dashes. So for example, the most used letter in the alphabet is E and it's represented by just one single dot and the least used letter Z is a longer combination using two dashes and two dots. So this makes letters and words which are used more often quicker to send. Do you know any words or letters in Morse code? Well, one of the most well-known signals is the international distress signal. Do you know it? It's SOS and it's represented by three dots followed by three dashes and then another three dots. You can see it being used here in the film of the Titanic, A Night to Remember. Any luck? Frankfurt, 150 miles away. The Olympics says the Mount Temple's nearer. Well, there must be someone nearer still. Try sending SOS, that's the new call. It may be the only chance you'll ever have. Do you have any personal experience of Morse code? Now it's not widely used today, but several professions have used it. It was used for quick communication by the Navy and Air Force during the Second World War, and some radio navigational aids still identify in Morse code today. Morse code was also used by Coast Guards until quite recently, and it's still really popular amongst amateur radio enthusiasts, although you don't need to be proficient anymore to get your license. People can also use Morse code to communicate personally if they have difficulties in communicating due to health problems. For example, people can use their eyelids to communicate by using a series of long and then quick blinks to represent the dots and dashes of Morse code. 
Another use of telegraphs and telegrams is to celebrate big occasions like engagements, weddings or christenings. Did you ever send or receive a telegram? Now telegrams used to be associated with bad news, for example if somebody had died, but the post office revamped that image with their new greetings telegrams in 1935. Let's have a look at some different designs of greetings telegrams here. The words were often a bit cheeky and they were kept by people as keepsakes. Now there's another very famous telegram that gets sent out to people on their 100th birthday and that is from the Queen. I wonder if you know anyone who has received one? This was a tradition which started back in 1917 with King George V and just over 20 years ago in 1999 Buckingham Palace produced a greetings card style telegram with a personalised message and a warm personal greeting from the Queen. So let's finish with some music. What do you think that the connection might be between the composer Beethoven and the Second World War? Well, the Allies used Beethoven's music as part of the V for Victory campaign. The opening notes of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony are three short notes and a long one. And this equates to three dots and a dash, which is the letter V in Morse code. Now, V was a symbol of resistance in the many countries which were occupied during the war, and this idea began to spread elsewhere, and the beginning of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony was used before every BBC wartime broadcast to Europe. Let's have a listen. Today is victory in Europe day. This was the moment we'd all been waiting for. Enormous crowds had gathered outside the house and all over the centre of London to hear the end of the war in Europe officially announced by the Prime Minister. It was at nine o'clock on VE Day that the King had broadcast his message to the people of Britain, the British Empire and the Commonwealth of Nations. Today, we give thanks to God for a great deliverance. Speaking from our empire's oldest capital city, all better, never for one moment daunted or dismayed. In Germany, and the enemy who drove all Europe into war has been finally overcome. It's important that we all continue to take care, to live well and to live safely. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this session. I hope that you enjoy taking part as much as I did presenting it to you. At Care Visions, it's important to us to keep improving and find out how we can provide a better experience for you all. So we'd really appreciate it if you could please take a couple of minutes to provide some feedback through our feedback survey. The link for this is in the comments box below. We'll be uploading new sessions on a regular basis, so please do keep checking our website to see the latest information. You can also subscribe on our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We look forward to connecting with you again next time. Take care and stay safe.